to our series on summery salads. I'm Mindy Turner with the Curry County Cooperative Extension Service through New Mexico State University. Thank you for joining us again. Hopefully you've been part of the initial part of this series. We've made a pea salad and a corn salad so far. Today we're doing something a little different. We're gonna actually do a fruit salad. Remember, the idea is that when COVID set in, a lot of people went out, we purchased a lot of things to have on hand, to have in stock in our pantries. And now, we're not sure what to do with that. So these are some recipes, some ideas that you can take what's in your pantry, the items that you already have on hand, what you've been using, and create something new, maybe a little different. The great thing about salads is you can mix and match. You can substitute things. You can pull out something that maybe you don't like or might have an allergy to and substitute something else. So today we're gonna look a little bit fruit salad can always be a yummy thing. I know a lot of us don't necessarily keep canned fruit around. So this is again, something you can make if you have frozen fruit, if you have fresh fruit that you wanna pick up, or if you just have that canned fruit that's up there, you can use whatever fruit you prefer, what you like. What I have right now, um, I have peaches and some mandarin oranges and then pineapple because I like that citrusy type of thing to go with it. So what I've done is I've just emptied my cans into the colander and allow them to drain. If you're worried about excess sugar and you would like to, you can always rinse them as well. Uh, typically, I, I don't need to rinse my fruit, but that might be something that works for you. So we're gonna go ahead and add that into our bigger bowl, you can see. I'm gonna throw this back here in the sink. Okay, and I'm just gonna remind you, because if you watched the first two, you've seen we've had some little mishaps here and there. This is meant to be a fun thing. I'm sharing some general information with you, providing you with some resources. And I want to do this as if it's you doing it in your own home. So know that it's not always 100% perfect when we get ready to put things together, uh, but we are doing our best and we're all learning together. So hopefully you enjoy that and feel like you're getting to know me and what we do as the Cooperative Extension Service. So I also had on hand, just because I happened to have them, I had some apples. I had my kids love apples, so that's something that we typically have around. So you can chop up some apple, throw it in there as well. Um, another great thing that would be good for this is bananas. If you wanted to add some bananas with bananas, I do recommend you chop them up and you put them on right before you serve it as opposed to uh, mixing it all up ahead of time because bananas do have a tendency to get a little mushy when you put it together. So we could actually take this, it's beautiful. Look at the colors, we're gonna mix it up. I did big chunks of fruit, you could do smaller chunks. You can cube them down, especially if you're doing this where it's somewhere you're gonna have smaller kids. I tend to like to pick around the stuff that maybe is not my favorite. So if I didn't want a peach, if there's a big piece of peach, it makes it easy for me to leave it out when I put it on my plate. So I don't mind the big chunks of fruit to put in our stuff. Okay, so fruit salad, you've got it, you're done. This is something that you can uh, stick out there. Like I said, we always wanna make sure, especially if we're taking something to a potluck, we might need to set it on top of a bowl of ice, keep it chilled in some way, make sure that we don't leave it out too long, and then keep it in the refrigerator in a sealed container. But we're not gonna stop here for now. Here's another option that you can add if you'd like to have a saucy fruit salad. One of the things you can do, this is a very simple sauce that you can make, it's gonna be a little sweet. You can switch out the flavors if that works better for you. So I'm gonna use what I actually drained from the fruit. I'm gonna keep this juice that we took out of the cans. Again, if you're using frozen or a fresh and you don't have this, the other option you could use is uh, orange juice. A couple of cups of orange juice can be fresh squeezed. Any kind that you like, if you like the pulpy kind, if you like it without pulp, or if there's another type of fruit juice that you prefer, that would be something, as long as it complements the fruits you're already using, you could use that. This is plain old sugar-free vanilla pudding mix. Okay, straight out of the box. I just went ahead and opened the package. We're gonna throw that in with our fruit juice. Okay, and if you don't want vanilla, you could use another flavor. I know there's a cheesecake flavor that's excellent. Um, so this adds very few calories, but it gives, it's gonna give it a lot of flavor for something that we could use as a sauce. I wish you guys could smell it because the fruit with the vanilla smells really good. Okay, so 
Pretty simple so far. So then our secret ingredient at this point is going to be some sour cream. This is plain old sour cream. You know, we always recommend you buy a low fat version of whatever it is. Again, we've talked a lot about substitutions, other things you can put in. Non-fat yogurt would be a great substitution for this as well. So you're going to take and add your sour cream in with your pudding mix and your fruit juice. Try to get what I can out of the bowl. See, I'm not banging my spoon on the bowl this time and making that loud sound, so I have learned a few things from you guys watching me. But so we're just gonna whip that around. You could do all of this with a hand mixer if you preferred. Uh, if you are use a countertop mixer, that would be great as well. But so now we have, but I'm just using, I used a regular old whisk and a spoon and it mixed up just perfect. So if you can see, it's again, it's the fruit juice, your pudding mix and some sour cream. And then we're just gonna pour that over our fruit that we've drained. I'm gonna try to see, I think I have more sauce than I do fruit at this point. So I'm just gonna use part of it and try to kind of fold that together. So the other nice thing about pudding mix, when you add it to something and you let it sit, is that eventually it sets up a little. So this is gonna thicken just a bit with your sour cream and your pudding and have that nice silky flavor to go with your fruit. Now, if you wanted to give it a little crunch, hopefully the apples will give it a little crunch. If you're a grape fan, chop up some grapes and throw that in there. Uh, another great option for this would be some type of a nut. If you wanted to use sunflower seeds or chopped up almonds, uh, walnuts, something like that would really add to the crunch as well as some of the flavor. Or if you're a coconut fan, shredded coconut would just blend right into this and give it a little different texture. I'm gonna reuse our apple bowl here so that you can get a better look. at what we came out with. Hopefully, I'm not sure I got my lighting exactly right. Okay, but this would make a phenomenal dessert as well, maybe a healthier option than some of the desserts we tend to pick. It's not something you're gonna sit down and eat the entire bowl. It's because we've added enough to it now, it's more of a sometime food, but it is a lot healthier than some of your more traditional options. So again, a great way to use up some of what you might happen to have in your pantry different versions of it, whatever it is that you prefer. Maybe you wanna throw in a little bit of cherry, something along those lines to give it that pop of color. This is another one I think would be excellent around the holidays. Change out a few things, add some different colors here and there, be great to take to a party. So think about what you have in your cupboard, what you have in your pantry that you can pull out and use in a safe way. Think about the dates, consider what you need to do. As always, if you would like to receive our newsletter, which will have the recipes that we've been sharing throughout this series, as well as other educational information and events going on around the county, go on to our website, curryextension.nmsu.edu, or give us a call at the Curry County Extension Office. We'd love to add you to our list to provide more information. If you have a question that you would like assistance with, you can also do that on our website. Click on the Family uh, Health and Wellness link. Sorry, couldn't get that out there the Family Health and Wellness link and type in your question and someone will get back with you over email or by phone, depending on how you ask us to contact you. Hopefully you're learning, hopefully you're enjoying. Uh, we are counting down the days until we're able to get out and do some more face-to-face -face classes. So if there's topics or areas that you're interested in, be sure and share that with us as well. Uh, for now, uh, we'll be back for one more part of the salad series. As, and then we'll start planning for our next one. So please feel free to get in touch. I'm Mindy Turner with the Curry County Cooperative Extension Service.